Hello again everyone, hope this video finds you well. Today's video is about our recent vacay to Maui, Hawaii, where we took the opportunity to rent a plane and fly around the islands. This is my fourth trip to the Hawaiian island chain and I have always tried to get a little flying time in during the visit. This is my son Carson's first trip to Hawaii, so I let him fly the plane this time around while I sat in the back. Here we are at the main airport on Maui, Kahului, getting ready to depart on runway two. There's lots of airline traffic at Pihog following the post-COVID tourism rebound. The plane we are flying is November 5055 Hotel, which is a 1975 Cessna 172 Mike owned by Fly Maui LLC. Now, if you're planning to do a visit to Hawaii and want to do some flying, let me give you a little tip. Forgo the rental checkout and just take a flight instructor along with you for the flight. And here's the reasons why. Number one, you'll save precious vacation time. A checkout will require probably an hour of your time and maybe multiple trips to the airport before you're even able to take the plane where you want to go. If you take a CFI along, you immediately can get going on what you really want to do, which is fly and explore. Number two, you'll save money. Even a two hour flight with the CFI along will be less expensive than the rental cost associated with a checkout. Number three, the CFI is a great local guide. No matter how much preparation you put into your flight, I guarantee you will not be familiar with the local procedures and all the reporting points along your flight path. There is a lot of traffic on the islands. Tourist helicopters, gliders, military, and airlines. The CFI has the local gouge. They know the place like the back of their hand. In addition to keeping you safe, they also will point out a lot of cool locations on the ground that you may have not been aware of during your vacation research. For this reason, plan your flight for the first few days that you're on the island so you have time to check out all these hidden gems that are pointed out to you later. Number four, the CFI can worry about the radio leaving you stress-free to enjoy what you really want to do. Fly and explore. Number five, even with the CFI occupying the right seat, you can still bring a passenger or two depending on the plane you rent. Every instructor I've flown with in Hawaii has been super nice, super cool, and let us do pretty much anything we wanted. Maui was no exception. Trust me, this is the way to go if you want to fly Hawaii. The approach you are watching now is Kala Papa Airport designation Papa Hotel Lima Uniform. Kalapapa is on the island of Molokai, about 35 nautical miles northwest of Kahalui. Yes, you heard that right. All Hawaiian airports have the Papa designator, even though Hawaii is a U.S. state. Kalapapa sits right on the north shore of Molokai, making for a dramatic overwater approach. The runway is 2,700 feet long with good pavement. In the background are the stunning, towering coastal cliffs of Molokai. Other things you need to know about flying in Hawaii, the weather. The weather in Hawaii can be very dynamic and each island has a microclimate that can change dramatically in the space of only a few miles. The weather can literally change in minutes. The windward side of the islands is always more likely to be cloudy and windy. Again, this is another good reason to bring a local CFI along in case you find yourself in worsening weather. From here we backtracked to Maui and headed east to Hana, which is the furthest point east on the island. By car it would take you three hours to get to Hana along the famous winding road of the Hana Highway. By plane we get there in 15 minutes. Something to be said for how the crow flies. Hana also has an ocean approach to runway 26, which is truly spectacular to fly. Because the winds were light, we took advantage of a runway 26 landing with a takeoff over the water on runway 8.
As you might expect, rental prices for planes are going to be much more than what you are used to paying for in the States. But in return, you get to fly across some very spectacular and beautiful scenery. Plan on paying a wet rental rate of anywhere between $200 and $300 an hour for a typical steam gauge 172. Make sure you bring plenty of GoPro cameras to capture this unique flight opportunity. I guarantee this is one flight video you will watch often years after the experience. Every FBO I have rented from was happy to let me mount cameras both internally and externally on their airplanes. Just use common sense. As far as flying advice goes, make sure you are comfortable flying in windy, gusty conditions. There are no calm wind days in Hawaii. It just doesn't happen. While crosswinds are rare at most airports, you still may have a sword fight on the final approach. And don't take that hand off the throttle. I consider it a primary flight control when landing in gusty conditions. Before you go, brush up on determining gust spread and gust factors, flying slightly faster final approaches, and performing no flap and partial flap landings. Also remember your primary training skill of flight control placement when taxiing in strong winds. If you're not comfortable flying when the wind gets above 15 knots, then Hawaii is going to present some challenges for you. Another great reason to have that CFI along. From Hana, we headed southwest overflying the gravesite of Charles Lindbergh. Yes, you heard me correctly. The famous Lucky Lindy is buried on a picturesque plot behind a small church on the island. The island was one of his favorite vacation spots and his final wish in 1974 was to be buried there. We did a loop around Molokini Island on the way back. I've been told this area has some of the best snorkeling on the planet. I'm about to play a condensed recording of our return to Kahului. I apologize in advance for the quality of the recording. We had some issues with squelch. But it underscores for you the reason why having a local pilot on the flight can lower the stress level. The audio is condensed and not synced with the video you'll see that even our local CFI got confused with the controller's local landmark references. Make a right turn by the rock quarry and we'll hold that over town. Make a left turn to keep towards the rock quarry. Let's turn towards the rock quarry, five oh, is that not, oh, it's that oh, one. There's two rock quarries. I yeah. I, I know. I was like, like uh, uh, hotel traffic passing off your left going 717, descending out of 1,600. When you go report them in sight. This is the mid-site five hotel. So the five five hotel, Roger, maintains that the separate side traffic constantly to land. Follow them on way two, clear to land. Way two, clear to land, five hotel. We'll check. And zero three zero at two three. Ramp, you're barely moving. Oh, he touched that about 1,000 foot mark, or 1,500 feet. So you just drive it in. 592, my car would wait to clear to land. Traffic, 10 o'clock, 5 miles eastbound. Type of known altitude indicates 3,100. Okay, uh, we'll be looking for the land. And with a wind like this, you'd be halfway down the runway and still stop before you before you miss the turn on. Yeah. You can literally do a helicopter landing today. Now we're down, we're over the ground. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not even, we're not even at approach speed yet. <laughs> 
All in all, any trip to a tropical destination should include a little flying. Flying over the same places all the time can really dampen that visceral feel of flying that we experienced when we first started. A new and exciting locale can go a long way in rejuvenating our aviator souls. I wish you all blue skies. Till next time, sleep!